But when you put that little R on the back of it, you got some power. It's a racing motor. First fish, new boat. Can we land them? Let's see how much power it's got. Wow. It's the freaking new boat curse, man. Dude, the people in that boat pulling up, they're yeah. about to be pissed. I'm a criminal, so I see that, there's dude. that. What is up, folks? Welcome back to another video. I am coming at you live from inside the man cave, the shop. And you guys might be able to notice that there's something pretty crucial missing behind me. Of course, I'm talking about the Blue Betty, my bass boat, my best water friend over the last three years. That's right, folks. I'm selling the bass boat, getting rid of it, looking to upgrade. I know it's a very, very sad time. Me and that boat go way back. That was my first ever bass boat. Love that thing to death. And I'm sorry to see it go. Of course, we have the project boat that's uh, sitting here chilling right now. You guys should have seen that video already, but she turned out amazing. She works like a dream, and I've got some plans for her really soon. But right here, this is where my Blue Betty stayed for so long. But you guys know how it is. You have a boat for a while, you use the heck out of it, and eventually it comes time to make an upgrade. Boy, do I have an upgrade to show you guys today. Obviously, you already know from the title and thumbnail, we've got a new boat that we're gonna add to our arsenal. Now, it may not be the type of boat that you guys think it is. It's not a bass boat. It's something way more interesting than that and potentially more versatile. You guys should remember I did a video last year about this time featuring a K2 powerboat, which is a local boat manufacturer to where I live in Southeast Alabama. I got to meet the owners, it's a father and daughter team. They design their own boats. They make a ton of stuff in-house, including all their upholstery on their boats and they're great people anyways that first boat that i tried out i absolutely fell in love with it it was a center console super comfortable boat we put like six guys on it that day and filmed the youtube video and we had an incredible time so this boat company is now known as alk2 power boats and they literally just made a completely new rig and i am one of the first people on planet earth that's getting one of these boats that's how new it is so in today's video we're gonna go pick up that boat, we're gonna take it out to the water, we're gonna launch it at the lake, we're gonna do a full walkthrough and breakdown of what this thing is and what I'm gonna be using it for in 2024. Because I have quite a few plans, new fishing destinations, new lakes, new trips that we're gonna do, and this boat is going to be a huge part of that. Guys, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. I'm gonna be doing a lot of giveaways over the next couple months, so make sure you're watching these videos all the way through, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, all that good stuff. It's a beautiful winter day here. It's gonna be about 60 degrees today and sunny, an absolute perfect day to launch a boat. I cannot wait any longer. Let's go pick this thing up. Let's look at it. Let's put our little fingers on it. We're gonna do some ripping around a lake, maybe even some fishing. Today's gonna be a good day, folks. All right, folks, made it to the boat ramp. And as you can see, this beautiful Guggen Green boat sitting right behind me. This is the brand new ALK2 Power Boat 17HS. The new 17HS is a skiff at its heart. It's a flat bottom boat. It's able to run in extremely shallow waters, which makes it ideal for a fisherman like myself who likes to fish rivers, creeks, marsh areas grassy flats, all those shallow areas that you might not want to bring your much larger boat into. And one of the first things you notice about this boat, one of the first things I noticed about this boat when I picked it up is the Mercury 60. It's a racing motor, a 60R. I have never run one of these racing motors before, but I have heard they will rip. Perfect motor to push this little skiff around. 17 foot long, obviously. It's a super wide boat. There's actually a lot more room on the deck than you'd think. This is my first time owning a center console boat of any kind, although I have operated a few. I am so excited to take this bad boy on adventure after adventure in 2024. Let me just grab you folks and hop in here real quick. Ah! Now, once you get in here, there's a lot of things you're going to notice right away. I mean, obviously, you've got your rear storage and live wells. I think that one's a live well right there. That one's just storage, or it can be converted into another live well. you got your back box right there that just leads you to your bilge, your water separator, batteries, all that boring stuff. 
Check out the casting platform though. Never had one of these things before. Probably gonna fall off of it as soon as I get up there, but you know, it's all good. Once again, this is gonna be a huge piece of how well you can fish shallow in this boat. Moving on to the front console, you got your seat that flips up, it gives you access to your batteries, the charging station, all that, your fuses. Got your dash right here, super simple. We're not gonna complicate anything here. You got that Garmin unit that I am so excited to have on this boat. My favorite mapping technology of any of the units I've ever run definitely Garmin we've got rod storage built in right there as you guys can see we've already got a couple Guggen rods in there rigged up ready to go fishing and you have that on both sides move it to the front of this boat and this is where the functionality really comes into play so you got this front little seat right here right full padded seat oh wait it's a cooler underneath there already built in it's literally integrated into the hole so you've got a seat and a cooler boom right there you got your front box which is your big box right here oh we have a life jacket Andrew we might not die today. I, was, I did that. Got that right there. And then of course you got your little storage up here. Rodan trolling motor and boom, there she is. So there's obviously not a lot of frills on this boat. There's not a lot of bells and whistles, but that's kind of the point. That's kind of why ALK2 decided to manufacture this boat to begin with. They wanted to make something that was super simplistic. It can run shallow. It's incredibly functional and it's also incredibly affordable. I think this one with all of the options out the door was like 40 grand. And for this type of a boat to get out on the water and have all these features, that's with electronics, trolling motor, everything. The folks at ALK2 Power Boats have truly done it again. They're also working on a bass boat, hybrid style boat. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that, but they are currently working on one. So we might see one of those on the channel in the future as well. I got to give the folks credit at ALK2. They literally did the Guggen Green on their own. They didn't even tell me about that. It was a complete shock when I saw it, but now it fits perfectly in the channel. There's only one thing left to do now, and that is to dump this beautiful boat into the lake right there. We're going to rip around. We're going to get shallow back in some of these creeks. We're even going to do a little bit of bass fishing today. I cannot wait to crank up this 60R and rip around some. I have no idea what it's going to be like, guys. I'm excited. Let's get this thing in the water. All right, we're launching her. First time ever. Oh, yeah. Nice and easy. There we go. Right off. And there we go. We're in. I cannot wait to fire this motor up. Oh, she is peeing immediately. This is one of the coolest boats I've ever seen in my life. That is a fact. Maybe small, but it's actually big at the same time, which I know doesn't make any sense, but it is. It's got a lot more room than you think it would have. Does it feel like you're on a skiff? Oh yeah, take me to the fishing chart. I'm waiting for the old satellite to pull up on the Garmin to look at the charts and everything. But in the meantime, let's put this thing in gear. Let's put around a little bit. And we're going to start ripping her around in just a minute as well. The motor's already been broken in, so I don't have to worry about taking it easy. Let's see what this thing can do. think it was gonna get going fast enough to make me cold but I sure got a little cold okay well it's safe to say that that's 60 although when you hear the words mercury 60 you don't necessarily think power but when you put that little R on the back of it you got some power 
All right, let's push up in this creek right here. This is the type of stuff that this boat was made to just scoot back into. I mean, I know I've only been in this boat for like five minutes. So I've only run it the one time, but safe to say this thing is going to be a huge addition to our boat family. And it's going to allow me to get to so many places, cool places to make content for you guys. It's gonna be awesome. Dude, I was walking on the edge of it, dude. It's like super stable too. I mean, it's, it's a fairly small boat, but we're two grown men. We're walking around it pretty easily. I really wanna mess with this casting platform, but I'm afraid I'm gonna fall off of it. They were telling me earlier when I picked the boat up, they have an attachment for this thing. I think it goes to like the rod holders and it gives you something to like hold on to or lean up against or something like that. But I don't have that yet. So I'm probably not gonna get on that thing today. The water temps is a brisk 56. I'd rather not fall in that. I think for now, we need to get this trolling motor down in the water. We need to check that whole operation out and push deep into this creek right here until it's super skinny water and see if we can catch any fish. Oh shoot, turned the wrong way. We trolling, baby. Trolling. We hands-free troll. Oh, let me just put that instruction manual down. Definitely wasn't reading that. Look, I'm not a saltwater guy, okay? Sue me. I don't really deal with these types of troll motors that often, but they are really nice. Once you get used to the handheld situation, I mean, it's awesome. They are nice. Because I could be back there on that casting platform, yeah. got this around my neck. Oh, there's a 10-pound bass on bed. Got it. Spot lock, hop up there, and now I'm just flipping a bandito bug in that bass's face until it eats. Fly fishing, man. Fly fishing is 100% on the docket to learn how to do next year and then to go like on a trip or two where we have to utilize fly fishing yeah. to like catch the species. And this is the boat that we're gonna do that on. So that's an 80 thrust right there. That's a lot for a small boat. That is definitely, I mean, I've, I've got on like two or three and we are just cruising back here. I think it's time to pick up a rod, man. Here pretty soon. Pack up all this safety information. Don't need that. We have a life jacket. We're safe enough. What do I all I have? Oh, you know what I have? I've got a crappy set up here. It's where I used to catch the pet bluegill that we literally just put in the micro pond. I'm just gonna whip this crappy lure around a little bit, just seeing if there's anything on these docks. Then we're gonna switch to some bass. I do know this creek pretty well. I've been down it quite a few times and I know that it gets like super skinny the further down it you go. Also, the water is super low on the lake as a whole. So we're gonna put this whole skinny water skiff, definitely gonna put it to its limits already. There is such a thing as a new boat curse, you know, where you just that like, it's hard to catch that first fish on a new boat or it's, or it's like something goes wrong or it's just, it's a dink, you know, there's always something. Let's get something a little bit more appropriate for this weather. Not a little flat banger. That red color seems to do really well once the water gets a little cooler and around these docks and whatnot. It's a perfect little running depth for a crankbait. Oh, look at this freaking trophy. Remember when I said something about bad luck and new boats and all that stuff? Yeah, well, that kind of exemplifies exactly what I'm talking about. It's a jumble of fishing line, a little bit of rope, and some natural forage, some good old fashioned pine. When you can't catch fish, at least if you can clean up your local lake, I mean, that's, that's something, right? I just saved a future angler some heartbreak right there. Let's crank this thing up full blast and see how much power it's got. Wow, holy smokes. Dude, we are cooking. That thing is humming. Jesus. Yeah, that's like actually way more than you even need. Now we're starting to get to the back of this creek where the depths are gonna start shallowing up real quick here. And hopefully there's some bass back here though. That's what I'd really love is to hook a new fish. Oh, that was so loud. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's a fish, baby. We're on. First fish, new boat. Can we land them? It feels okay. Oh, it is okay. Wait, it's a chain pickerel. 
Oh, it's a pickle roll. People call them pike in other places. You got to be kidding me. It's the freaking new boat curse, man. I'm telling you guys. Oh, he's hooked my cooler now. That's a brand new cooler, bro. Not cool. I'm telling you guys, there is a new boat curse. I mean, I'm literally proving it live. When you get a new boat and you take it out and you go fishing for whatever species you're trying to catch, something weird is going to happen. Almost guaranteed and it's never good. But we did land a fish. You did. In the new boat. I mean, that is just... This is going to be a problem. We're going to have to put pliers on him. Be right back. Man, we got a chain pickerel right here. That's the only thing we've seen. What a mess this guy did to me. Nah. No, he's a little rinky dink. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. You gotta look on the internet how to clean them. Now, my grandfather used to just oh, take a... I definitely don't want them. Smash them. And the meat, like crab meat, is really good. Really? Huh. Yeah. Who knew? Uh, like, not me. Note to self, we should probably start eating those jokers when we catch them. Boom. Fish number one. Somehow I unhooked him without getting myself hooked. He bloodied up the new boat. Big time, which is not cool. But we did land our first fish ever. At least maybe we got the new boat curse out of the way and done with. And apparently it tastes like crab meat. <laughs> I said, dude. According to that guy. So I, uh, I'd be inclined to believe him, honestly. He looks like he's eating some chain pickerel. He, he looked like he knew what he was talking about. Best part is we haven't even gotten in the back of this creek, truly, to the good stuff. So hopefully that's just a sign there are fish here and they're ready to eat. The joker was hanging out on a dock like a bass. What's going on in this world here? Struck like a bass, fought like a bass, until right at the end when I was like, hmm, that feels weird. Oh, that's why. Could definitely pull a fish out of here. It is shallow right there. Super shallow. Oh yeah, it's like super shallow. Since we are in such skinny water, let's switch up tactics on them. Let's hit them with a little weightless lunker log. What do you think about that? This is a grass presentation we can all get behind. Anybody home up underneath this dock? I'd love to crank something other than a chain pickerel for my first fish in this boat ever. But I suppose beggars can't be choosers. I should just be happy for a bite at this point. I mean, dude, we're in like 18 inches of water right now. I'm maneuvering around just fine. This boat is awesome. This creek is one of the many places that we need to come back to, like in the springtime or something like that, especially if the water levels come back up and it's like normal pool. This little area is a huge spawning area in this creek. Now I know a bunch of other spots like it. So once the fishing kicks back up in March or so, April, we're definitely gonna have to come back out here and give this place its due justice and work it, work it long and hard, if you know what I mean. All right, folks. Well, we're going to head on out of here because it's getting freaking cold quickly. And I did not wear appropriate clothing. First outing in the boat was a massive success. Number one, it floated, which is always a good thing. Number two, we got to run it. We got to really test out this 60R. Worked beautifully. Gets up on plane super easy. It's pretty quick, you know? I mean, it was probably running like 35, 40 at one point. It was eating some moderate to low waves. Now this is nothing compared to the tests that we were gonna put this boat through this year, but this is a great start. Hell, we even caught the wrong species of fish back there in that creek, which is just always fun. It's a delight. Let's head back to the boat ramp. All right guys, check it out. It's crucial that I mention a couple key details because we cut the cameras off right as we were pulling up to the boat ramp, right before this interaction with the game warden happened. So I'm just gonna touch on a couple things really quickly. So as we're pulling up to the boat ramp, like literally as we're about to hit the dock, we cut all the cameras off, you know, we're packing stuff up like we always do when we're done filming out on the boat. Then we noticed a game warden pulling into the parking lot, the boat ramp. And he kind of like parked halfway in the back, you know, it was no big deal. It's not unusual to see a game warden at the boat ramp. Now keep in mind, this was a brand new boat. I'm talking about 
brand new. I just got it from ALK2 the day prior. So obviously the boat wasn't registered and we had bare minimum supplies on the boat, although we did have life jackets. So right out of the gate, obviously we weren't technically legal, but in Alabama there is a grace period that you have from the moment that you get a new boat till the moment that you get in trouble for not having it registered. Most of the time that's how it goes. You have a grace period. And we were definitely well within that grace period. So as Andrew's going up to get the truck to back the trailer down into the water, the game warden changes parking spots. All of a sudden he pulls up to the front. So I'm like, oh, here we go. Then right as we're pulling the new boat up onto the trailer and they were about to pull it out of the water, he comes up and he's like, man, that looks like a brand new boat. So I already know, right? He's about to gig me. And I said, yep, yeah, brand new boat, man. This is, you know, we just dumped it in the water to put around a little bit. Plan on getting this thing all registered and all that good stuff. So we pull the boat out of the water and we park. This is where things get a little hairy. As he's checking our fishing licenses, then he starts asking me questions about this boat. Do you have life jackets? Do you have a throwable life preserver? Do you have a fire extinguisher? That type of stuff. And so I told him straight up on us. I was like, brother, I just got this boat. We do have life jackets, but we don't have a throwable, which I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't even quite sure that I was supposed to have that on this boat. I'm supposed to have two life jackets, one throwable, and a fire extinguisher, which we obviously didn't have. So once he realized that we weren't in compliance, you know, with state law, then he asked me to come over to his truck. And that's when I knew I might be in some kind of trouble. people in that boat pulling up they're yeah. about to be pissed wow, what's happening? i don't know the circumstances but he's literally about to bust those guys for something so i have no idea uh but he said they were going to be angry i guess he's already talked to him once today i don't really know but as far as me i'm a criminal so i see that there's dude. that it's a long time coming i mean let's be honest i've had this coming for a long time <laughs> i'm just kidding this is actually a warning but those people are not about to get a warning i don't know what's going on he was originally looking for them like that's why he's at this boat ramp. And then he sees us pull out with this new boat that's not registered and he's like, oh, I'll just go mess with those guys. I don't want to be a part of a domestic uh, law enforcement disturbance. Trolling motor. I'd say we got pretty skinny. Come here, look. I mean, we got in some, we got in some mud right there. Oh yeah, dude, that, that's solid right there. Yeah, it is. I was feeling on it earlier. God, so that's a heavy duty trolling motor. I'm gonna say. Well, that was a pretty interesting situation at the boat ramp there. So weird. The game warden was apparently already at that ramp looking for the driver of the boat of the vehicle that was up there. There was only one vehicle up there by the time we pulled the boat out. I'm not really sure what they were doing or what he was looking to bust them doing because he didn't really say and I didn't want to ask him when he had me hemmed up over there asking me if I had a freaking fire extinguisher. Like, dude, I just got the boat, man. We were just putting it in the water. We're going to take it right back out. And we do have life jackets, so we had that covered, but... I guess that's my bad, but he gave me a warning, so no beef with him, he's doing his job. But right as me and him are talking, and we he realizes that he knows neighbor Daryl, and he knows me because he knows that I'm his neighbor, as that is realization's happening, the boat that he's looking for starts pulling in. I'm just like, hey, chief, that's uh, I think that's your people right there. He's just like, oh, he's like, yeah, all right, I'll just... See you later, you know? I was like, oh shoot, he's getting on them. So I have no idea what they did. It was two older gentlemen. They were in a nitro, I don't know. No telling. But the new skiff, we got some dirt on her. We got some fish blood on there. Nice little chain pickerel slime. So she has officially been broken in. The boat was awesome. 
We're gonna use it a lot more in the future, like I said earlier. Another feature this boat has, I forgot to even talk about, was the aluminum magic tilt trailer. This thing is freaking awesome. It looks good. It's not gonna corrode and rust. Super easy getting this boat in and out of the water. So all in all, just totally enjoyable experience. I've got a couple specific plans for this boat for next year, 2024, but I wanna hear from you guys. Get in the comments section. Let me know the type of fishing trips that you wanna see with us in this boat. Guys, if you wanna check out this boat or any of the boats that ALK2 Power Boats makes, I'm gonna have them linked right at the top of the description. Go check them out. I think they have a bunch of dealers all over the Southeast, so they are gettable. You can get these boats. They're awesome folks. Big shout out to them for hooking me up with this new boat. It feels good to have this space in the garage filled for the time being. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with this beautiful boat over here. Once we free up this little space, we might have to add a new bass boat into the mix here as well. So it's gonna be an exciting 2024 for sure. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Love you guys, see you next time.